Hello and welcome to our coverage of the AP Physics C Barron's book, specifically now dealing with Chapter 8, Simple Harmonic Motion. So in the next few videos we'll be defining simple harmonic motion and looking at some systems that exhibit that. Uh, we'll be defining these terms, amplitude, period, and frequency, which are all invaluable when discussing simple harmonic motion. And we'll be using Newton's laws and energy and applying them to situations that exhibit simple harmonic motion. So the first thing we should probably do is define what simple harmonic motion is. And it's an oscillation in a system usually caused by some sort of restoring force. And this restoring force will cause the the object or whatever you're measuring to oscillate in regular intervals and it can usually be described by a sine function or a cosine function. Now the first harmonic motion situation we'll look at is uh, something we've looked at before, a block on a spring. So if we have this block attached to a spring with some k value we know that the force acting on the block in this case, because the vertical forces cancel out, we just have that uh, F equals MA, and the only uh, force acting on it is the force of the spring, in this case, negative KX. So we get that negative KX equals MA. But we know from kinematics that acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time. So we can rewrite this as negative kx equals m d squared x dt squared. Now, I'm not going to go into how exactly to solve this differential equation, but basically uh, you can solve this equation for an expression for x by uh, observation, essentially. And if you look, what... Uh, becomes a negative with some sort of constant in front. So, you know, negative k over mx equals d squared x dt squared. Uh, what follows this form where you have, you know, this constant in front of the second derivative? Well, it turns out it's either sine or cosine, because if you have sine ax, if you derive that, you get a cosine ax, and if you derive it again, you get negative a squared sine ax. So you have the second derivative part right here is the same as the initial equation you start with except with a negative sign and a different constant in front and that's why we use sine and cosine to describe uh, objects that follow simple harmonic motion. So based on this information we can generalize the equation to be x equals a cosine of root k over m times t plus some um, initial angle phi. And you can do the same thing except replacing cosine instead with uh, sine. Now an interesting consequence of this equation is that because we can derive this and get the velocity and what have you, we'll have two equations with two unknowns, the time and the amplitude. And at any point, if we know both the velocity as well as the x position, we can determine the entire motion for an object. It should also be noted that all motion that follows this, you know, negative kx equals d squared x dt squared, all the motion that follows this form is simple harmonic motion. So, for example, if we transform this into a rotational analog, let's say torque equals i times alpha, or the uh, negative k theta equals i d squared theta dt squared. It's the same form, therefore it's also simple harmonic motion, just rotationally. So there's a few things to note about graphically representing simple harmonic motion. The first of which is that most restoring forces, such as f equals negative kx, are linear. So when we do the you know sine or cosine approximation, we have some sort of graph coming down like this, and then it would go back up, etc. You have to realize that this part right here, uh, where you're transitioning from positive to negative or what have you, is very approximately linear. So 
this sine or cosine approximation fits the motion very well. You also have to realize that um, because of the nature of the restoring force that objects that are exhibiting simple harmonic motion are essentially trapped in a potential energy valley so they oscillate back and forth changing their speed as they go and because you know force equals negative du dx we get back to our uh, negative derivative and what have you but it's important to note as well that for nonlinear forces like say with a pendulum if the restoring force is sufficiently small it's going to be approximately linear and our uh, model holds up so for things like pendulums with small displacement uh, the sine or cosine model holds up just as strong as those with precisely linear models. Moving on now we're going to write the general equation for simple harmonic motion which is position as a function of time equals the amplitude times cosine and theta and we'll compress that root k over m or m over k to omega times t plus phi. Now we'll have to define each of these terms and they happen to relate to the uh, terms we have over here on the left side. So A right here is the amplitude and amplitude is basically the maximum distance from equilibrium that it can reach. Which makes sense because if this cosine term comes out to be 0 or 180 then this uh, whole term right here becomes 1 and then all you're left is that x equals a and that's the maximum value. Now this middle term right here is what is known as the angular velocity which makes sense that we represent it with omega and it's sometimes also called the angular frequency. Now the angular frequency or uh, is basically a measure of how rapidly something oscillates. So you know whether it goes back in a short amount of time or a quick amount of time. Now the last thing is this angle phi which is what is known as the phase angle. Now the phase angle is essentially the constant giving the initial angle of the system. Which makes sense because if you have, you know, if you start at t equals zero, then this whole omega t term cancels out and all you get is the cosine times phi, which gives you some sort of fraction of the amplitude at which you start. And just to round out our definitions over here, uh, period is the time it takes for one oscillation. So if you have a pendulum on a string is the time it takes to go from you know its extreme over here through and all the way back. That happens in one period which is usually represented by uh, t. And the frequency is the uh, number of revolutions or number of oscillations in a given time. So because this is the period is time per oscillation and frequency is oscillations per time you can see that frequency and period are inversely re related in other words one is the inverse of the other and this frequency is usually represented by a lowercase f now that we have all those defined in the next video we'll be looking at the relationships between them as well as how to calculate the various values given the known motion of an object exerting simple harmonic motion.